breakings and formations of chemical bond. Eh? Now, during a uh, chemical reactions, energy must be supplied to break bonds in the reactants, and uh, energy is given out when the bonds in the products formed. For example, eh? let's see. For example, uh, reactions between hydrogens and uh, oxygens. Eh? Okay, hydrogens react with oxygens to produce water. Hydrogen is an it's a diatomic molecule. Eh? So there's a hydrogen atom attached with another hydrogen atom. Hydrogen atom attached with another hydrogen atom. Eh? Oxygen is also a diatomic molecule. So one oxygen atom attached with another oxygen atom. Now during a chemical reactions, uh, for the chemical reactions to occur, we must break all this bond. Okay, we must break all this bond, eh? and to break all this bond, uh, energy is absorbed. To break the bonds, eh? we must supply energy, we must give energy to the molecules. So energy absorbed, energy absorbed eh? to break the bond. This one, energy absorbed to break the bond. So always remember, to break the bond, the molecule will absorb energy, or we must supply energy to the molecule to break the bond. Okay. After breaking the bond, eh? after breaking the bond, let me. After breaking all the bonds, the oxygens, the oxygens will form water. Oxygens will form water with hydrogens. Eh? It will form water with hydrogens. Okay, so they will form bonds. Eh? They will form bonds between the uh, oxygen and hydrogens. That eh? will form bond here, and when they form bonds, energy will be released. So when break the bond, energy will be absorbed. And when they form the bonds, energy will be released. So energy is given out when bond in the products form. So that's the very first thing that you need to know. Eh? So to break the bond, uh, the molecule absorb energy. To form the bond, it will release energy. And uh, the amount of energy that absorb or release depends on the strength of the bond. Okay? It depends on how strong the bond. Eh? If the bond is very strong, then it, it needs uh, more energy to break the bond. And when the form a strong bond, it will release more energy. Okay, so how much energy uh, absorbed or how much energy released depends on how strong the bond is. Eh? Okay, so the amount of energy that absorbed or released depends on the strength of the bond. Breaking and formations of chemical bond. If the amount of energy released during the process of uh, creating bond is higher than the amount of energy that taken in during process of breaking bond, then the reaction is exothermic. Okay. So, for example, um, just now uh, we discussed uh, hydrogens react with oxygens to form H2O, right? Okay. So let's say we break the bond. Eh? We break the bond. It absorbed. Uh, it absorbed. Let's say this one absorbs uh, ten kilojoule. Okay. This one absorbs uh, twenty kilojoule. Okay. It absorbs twenty kilojoule, ten kilojoule. So totally, uh, this one is two mole. Eh? Two mole. Okay. So totally, the amount of energy uh, absorbed is thirty kilojoule. Eh? Thirty kilojoule. But when they form the bond, when they form water, they form the bonds. Let's say the energy release. Eh? Energy release is forty kilojoule. Okay, forty kilojoule. So the energy release is higher than the energy absorbed, right? Okay, it released forty kilojoule, but only absorbed thirty kilojoule. Eh? Okay. So in these reactions, in this reaction, there is a Net energy loss, okay. The, there's a net energy loss uh, of ten kilojoule. Absorb thirty, release forty. Yeah. So, uh, the energy loss is ten kilojoule. Uh, okay. Net loss of energy is ten kilojoule. So, uh, then this is an exothermic reactions. Exothermic reaction because uh, more energy loss than the energy absorbed. Uh, so during during uh, exothermic reactions, uh, some energy is absorbed and some energy is released. Okay, but uh, the energy release is more than the energy absorbed, and therefore uh, there is a net loss of energy, and it's called exothermic reactions. Okay, yeah? that's exothermic reactions. Uh, the endothermic reaction is opposite. Okay, so if the amount of energy absorbed to break the bond is higher, the energy absorbed is higher than the energy released, then it's endothermic. So in both exothermic and endothermic reaction, there are energy release, energy absorber. But for ex uh, exothermic reaction, energy release is higher than energy 
okay and then for uh endothermic energy absorbed is higher than energy released now let's see this example eh? let's see uh formations of ammonia formations of ammonia uh this is the chemical reactions of formations of ammonia one nitrogen molecule react with three hydrogen molecule to form two ammonia molecule okay so before the reactions uh, we have uh, nitrogens okay nitrogen nitrogen has three covalent bond eh? nitrogen has three covalent bond uh you should have learned this in form four eh? okay you should have learned that uh, nitrogen has three covalent bond in form four in the topic called chemical bond and then the hydrogen has a single covalent bond but we have three hydrogens eh? so three hydrogens three hydrogen with uh, uh, three single bond okay so this is uh before the chemical reactions eh? uh when the reactions occurs eh? we must break all the bonds first we must break the three covalent bonds between uh nitrogens and then also uh the covalent bonds between hydrogens of the three molecules eh? and uh when a bond is broken energy is absorbed as we discussed just now right okay if we break the bonds energy is absorbed eh? so for the reactions to occur all the bond between the nitrogens and hydrogen must be broken and to break the bond heat energy is absorbed from the surrounding okay so heat energy absorbed from the surrounding uh after that okay after that all these atoms uh, okay these uh, nit these nitrogens will uh, react with the hydrogens uh, this nitrogen we will react with another three hydrogens to form ammonia so nitrogen will form three covalent bond with the three hydrogens uh, to form ammonia molecule okay so when new bonds formed energy will be released okay to break the bond energy will absorb eh? okay and when they form a new bonds the energy will be released so let's say the energy release is y joe energy absorb is uh, x joe eh? energy absorb is x joe and energy release is y joe so nitrogen atom combined with three hydrogen atom to form one ammonia molecule and when forming the bonds heat energy is released so break the bonds heat is absorbed form the bonds heat is released if the heat absorbed is more than the heat release eh? okay heat absorbed is x kilojoule and heat release is y kilojoule okay so if the energy absorbed in step two is greater than the energy released in a step three eh? okay x uh, greater than y that is endothermic reactions and if the energy absorbed in step two is lower than the energy released in step three or x is less than y then is uh, exothermic reactions Okay, now let's see this example. So for uh, this uh, exothermic reactions, formations of hydrogen chloride. Okay, so this is the chemical equations uh, for the this the formations of hydrogen chloride. One hydrogen molecule react with uh, one chlorine molecules to form two hydrogen chlorides uh, molecule. Okay, uh, it's stated here that uh, heat energy absorbed to break one mole of HH. Okay, HH, this this one, okay, because hydrogen and hydrogen, it will form a single bond. Eh? Okay, this one, uh, hydrogen, hydrogen. Eh? So the heat energy is to break one mole, not one molecule, not, not one molecule, it's one mole. Eh? One mole is equal to uh, 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23. Eh? So to break, to break one mole of this HH bonds, uh the heat absorb is 436 kilojoule so it will absorb 400 436 kilojoule kilo means thousand eh? so it means a 436 000 joule to break one mole of a uh, hydrogen bond hydrogen hydrogen bond okay and also we need to break the chlorine chlorine bond right and, and the energy to break this chlorine chlorine bond is 244 kilojoule which bond is stronger the hydrogen hh bond is stronger or cl cl bond is stronger which one is stronger hydrogen hydrogen or chlorine chlorine hydrogen hydrogen yes that's correct okay that's correct why because you see the heat energy absorbed is higher compared to this one okay so how much energy absorbed depends on how strong the bond eh? if, if the bond is stronger then more energy will be absorbed eh, to break the bond okay uh, these two add together, okay, the sum of the energy being absorbed, okay, uh, together is uh, 436 plus 244 is equal to 680 kilojoule, 680 kilojoule. Okay, that is the energy absorbed, right? That's energy absorbed. Huh? Then how about the energy release? 
after we break the bond, the hydrogen will form a bond with uh, chlorine to form hydrogen chloride, right? So the sum of energy will be released when two more, because this one is two more, eh? So two more of HCl bonds are formed, it's a 864 kilojoule. So this is the energy release, eh? 864 kilojoule. So then what is the energy change? Energy change, eh? so the energy change is uh, just now it absorbs 680 kilojoule right and then it released 864 kilojoule eh? now if the heat energy is released then we use minus eh? okay heat absorb we use plus eh? okay but this one because the first one you don't need to to, to write the plus so uh 68 kilo 680 kilojoule uh release minus 864 kilojoule eh? okay so therefore the net change the net change is negative 184 kilojoule there is 184 kilojoules of energy released to the surrounding. The negative shows that the energy released to the surrounding. There is a net loss of uh, energy. So this is exothermic reaction because uh, energy release is higher than the energy absorbed. Okay, energy release higher than energy absorbed, and therefore this is uh, exothermic reactions. Huh? Okay. Uh, so therefore the reactions of formations of hydrogen chloride is exothermic reactions okay so right here exothermic okay exothermic reactions okay so this is the chemical equations and the delta h the delta h is equal to this one eh? negative 184 kilojoule negative 184 kilojoule so that is the energy change eh? so for exothermic reactions uh, the heat release during the formations of the bond is higher than the heat absorbed during the breakings of the bond. Okay. Okay, then uh, how about endothermic reactions? Do we need to write this uh, kilojoule per mole? Do I write kilojoule per mole? No. No need to write mole. Eh? And this is uh, this shouldn't be the delta H. Eh? Okay, this one's just called a change of energy. Eh? Just write here energy change. If we use delta H, then we must use uh, kilojoule per mole. Eh? I will explain to you later why, why when we use delta H, we must use a kilojoule per mole. But this one actually is not delta H, eh? just energy change. So we just write energy change equals to negative 184 kilojoule, that's all, okay? Don't need to write kilojoule per mole. Exothermic reactions, uh, decompositions of ammonia. Now just now I, I, I give you the examples of formations of ammonia, right? Okay, this is decompositions of uh, ammonia, okay? We can uh, decompose ammonia to form nitrogens and uh, hydrogens. Uh, ammonia decomposed to form nitrogen and hydrogens. And uh, amount of energy absorbed to break six mole of NH bond. Okay, because the uh, ammonia, each ammonia has three NH bond, uh, okay? So ammonia has three uh, co covalent bonds. So we each ammonia has three covalent bonds, and we have two ammonia. So two ammonia, it has six NH bond. Okay, six NH bond. So uh, to break this six mole of uh, NH bonds, the energy absorbed is a uh, two three two eight kilojoule. Eh? Two three two eight kilojoule. And the amount of energy released when one mole of uh, nitrogen bond are formed because. Uh, Okay, there's one two nitrogen molecule actually. There are two two nitrogen molecules. So amount of energy released when two mole eh? no, shouldn't be one mole, should be two mole. Eh? Oh sorry, sorry, I think there's a mistake here. This one should be one. Eh? This one should be one. Okay. Because uh two N will form just one more nitrogen molecule. If it's two mole, then the, the equation not balanced. Eh? Okay, so sh uh, should be just one on here. Okay. So amount of energy being released when one mole of nitrogen's bonds, eh? this N N nitrogen nitrogen bonds form are uh, nine five four five kilojoule, and three more of hydrogen because we have three hydrogens. Eh? So three more of this uh, hydrogen hydrogen uh, is uh, four three six kilojoule. Okay, this is the energy release eh? when they form these two. Eh? The energy is released. So therefore, uh, the sum of energy released, sum of energy released will be. Uh, this one, uh, 945 plus uh, 436. Uh. The sum of energy release is 2328. No, no, it's not 2328. Uh. It's 945 plus uh, 436. Uh. Oh, let's erase this. So sum of energy release is 945, 436. Uh. 945, 436. Kilojoule, kilojoule. Okay, now use your calculator. Tell me what's the sum of the energy released. 
1381 kilojoule, right? So the sum of the energy change, okay, the energy absorbed 2328, okay, and then minus this uh, 945 minus 436, this two actually is, uh, this two uh, together is uh, minus 1381 uh, kilojoule, and therefore we still, we have a net energy gain, or net en energy absorbed 947 kilojoule, 947 kilojoule, so uh, this is endothermic reactions. Okay, because the energy absorbed is higher than energy release. Okay, uh, we have net energy gain. So uh, this is an endothermic reactions. Uh, endothermic reactions, and uh, the delta H. Okay, we shouldn't use delta H. I just write energy change. The energy change is uh, nine four seven. Uh, positive nine four seven kilojoule per. More is the amount of energy fixed or depends on the questions. Uh, actually, the amount of energy is fixed. Okay, it's fixed, but you don't need to memorize it. Okay, because in the questions they will they will give you all this value, all this number. For example, uh, the energy change for this uh, decompositions of ammonia is nine four six kilojoule per mole. This is fixed already, but you don't need to memorize this all this number. Okay, in exams, uh, if this question come up, they will, they will give you all this this value.